In this video, we will look at how to do insulation resistance tests on a single phase induction motor. You may need to start by using a continuity test to identify the different motor components, namely the start and run windings, the centrifugal switch and the capacitor. Before you start, make a quick sketch of the layout of the posts in the terminal box so that you can record your results. Make sure you have a working multimeter set to the ohm setting. Remember to short your leads before you start to make sure your multimeter is correctly calibrated. Test the resistance between each of the posts. Between posts 1 and 2, we get a reading of 15.1 ohms. Note this on your sketch. Between posts 3 and 4, we get 4.7 ohms. We get open circuits between 5 and 6, 5 and 7, 5 and 8, 6 and 7, and 6 and 8. Between posts 7 and 8, the reading is 0 0.1 ohms. We now know that the start winding is connected between posts 1 and 2. The start winding always has the highest resistance. The run winding is connected between posts 3 and 4. The centrifugal switch is connected between posts 7 and 8. The centrifugal switch always has the lowest resistance, close to zero. We suspect that the capacitor is connected between posts 5 and 6. To confirm this, change your multimeter to the Farad setting. If we test between post 5 and 6, we get a reading of 193 microfarads. This confirms that the capacitor is connected between 5 and 6. Now that we have identified all the components, we can continue with the insulation resistance test. To do this, we swap our multimeter for an insulation resistance tester. We start by checking the insulation between the start and run windings. Connect the leads of the tester and press the test button. Regulations dictate that the reading must be greater than 1 meg ohm to be acceptable. In this case, we get a reading of infinity which is greater than 1 meg ohm, so the insulation between these components is acceptable. Next, we test between the start winding and capacitor. We again get a reading of infinity, indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. Next, Test between the start winding and centrifugal switch. We again get a reading of infinity, indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. Now, we test between the run winding and the other components. Start with the run winding and the capacitor. We get a reading of infinity indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. Test between the run winding and the centrifugal switch. We get a reading of infinity, indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. Finally, we can test between the capacitor and the centrifugal switch. We get a reading of infinity, indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. Next, we need to test the insulation between each component and earth to make sure that there are no short circuits with the motor frame. Here, we are testing between the start winding and earth. 
we get a reading of infinity, indicating that the insulation between these components is acceptable. We do the same test between each of the other components and Earth, making sure that the reading we get each time is greater than 1 meg ohm. 